Hello everyone, my name is R.B. Baloi from OBT Vet College, Mango Campus. Today I'll be offering Engineering Graphics and Design Level 3 for NCV. The specific topic which we are going to look for today is sectioning. Let's get to it. What is this particular sectioning? But before we get to that point, what we'll be talking about is the learning outcomes. In order to understand a subject, you need to understand the learning objectives. So in this case, based on sectioning, the learning objectives or the learning outcomes stands as follows. At the end of this particular lesson, you should be able to understand the autographic symbol, understand or create a 2D sectional drawings, by the way, when I talk about T2D, I'm saying two-dimensional. Nee? The difference between two-dimensional and three-dimensional looks like that. This is two-dimensional. You look at your Cartesian plane, you get your y-axis and your x-axis. From this particular plane, I can draw a figure. Let me show you an example. Now, this is called a 2D figure, two-dimensional figure. The reason being, it's represented along Y and X. Now, let's look at the three-dimensional. What's the difference between a 2D and a three-dimensional shape? A three-dimensional shape will be represented along Y, X, and Z axis. Now, we include or we introduce a new axis called the z-axis or the z-axis. So what will happen to this Cartesian plane? Can you please observe? I'm using something called principle of parallelism. That will happen. Now we form something called a model or a volume or a shape. So a 3D object is a shape or a model, whereas a 2D object is just a figure. I don't know if you understand that. So it's very important or it's very critical that we understand how to create a 2D sectional drawings. Another learning outcome is to construct views. You know, I realize that most of the students find it very hard to differentiate between the views or um, the orthographic views. What I'm talking about is this. You find that sometimes they are saying, let's look at this shape. They are saying, draw the front view of the shape, the top view of the shape, the left view of the shape, but you don't know where to start. That's what we'll also include for today's lesson. You need to be able to understand how to construct your views. Next point, another learning outcome, You'll be able to utilize various line types. Guys, trust me, I've seen this before. A lot of people find it very hard to distinguish between different types of lines or different line types. You find that somebody in a space of using a hidden detail, somebody will now use a center line. That is not acceptable. So today's lesson will also have to cover line types. The last part of the learning outcomes will be to apply dimensions on engineering drawings. So it's very important that we understand dimensions or your measurements. So in this case, we'll be telling you something. We use engineering drawings in a specialized field. So who's using this engineering drawings? It's engineers, it's technicians, it's mechanical draftsperson, it's mechanical technologist, or an artisan. So we need drawings in order to visualize what we need to plan, what we need to design, and what we need to make. What is a sectional drawing? A sectional drawing is a type of engineering drawing whereby a model or object has been cut to show a hidden area or a hidden feature. Let's go to the next slide. I've given there different types of examples of sectioning. 
In order to understand sectioning, we are going to use a very simple example, an apple. We got different ways of consuming an apple or eating an apple. Someone will say, I prefer to cut my apple into two equal parts. You take a knife, then you cut it. In other words, you're saying you're sectioning your apple. You're cutting it into two equal parts. When you cut your apple, you realize that there's different sections there. You got a seed, you got a seed there. This is what is called sectioning. Along my screen, I've shown in figure one, a normal apple. Figure two, a sectioned apple, which has been cut. This means sectioning, when something is being cut. For the next slides, I've represented an example of a vehicle. Sometimes engineers need to make a proper testing or analysis based on the inside part of a vehicle. What I mean is this. This is your complete vehicle. Then we know there's an engine inside, but we can't see that engine. So what will happen is, they'll cut this vehicle into a half so that you can see the engine, the transmission, your prop shafts, your differential, and so forth. So that's what is called sectioning. Sectioning, it means to cut and see the hidden feature. Even if I were to cut myself, I would cut maybe there, I would see the brain and the eyes, the nerves, the, as long as it's something which you cannot see when something has not been cut. So in this case, based on my uh, screen, I have a, v a normal vehicle in, on figure three. On figure four, I got a section car which has been cut into half. That's called sectioning. Now let's analyze orthographic symbol. You'll be surprised that sometimes you see such a symbol you see such a symbol like that, like that, but you don't know what it means. Now I'm gonna make it easy for you. This is a truncated cone with three dimensional shape, it looks like that. So you have to analyze the front view part of it and the right view part of it. For now, I'm referring to third angle orthographic projection symbol. Let's look at that. Third angle orthographic, orthographic projection Now, what happens with this particular symbol? We need to define it. What is this orthographic symbol? It's a type of a symbol used for presenting views of a model or an object in a specific order. So when we say we want, when we, when we say we want a front view here, the top view here, the left view here, we use orthographic symbol. When we say top view there, front view there, right view there, we also use orthographic symbol. But what's the difference between first angle orthographic symbol and third angle orthographic symbol? It's very easy. Let me show you through by using a screen. As you can see there, it starts with an inside circle and outside circle with a tapered part. This is the third angle orthographic projection. I'm going to analyze it using a 3D software. By the looks of this symbol, I can reorientate it to, differ, to suit different views. The greener part would represent the right view. The red part would represent the front view. So I'm going to put it in a front view form. This is our front view. So it's circular in a shape. It's circular in a shape. Then there's right view.
the right view now turns and look like a tapered. So this is a third angle orthographic projection. In order to know that an, an, a, a drawing is made using third angle orthographic projection, you are going to see the top view, the front view below, the right view on the side. When it's first angle, they swap. The tapered path will come this side, followed by the inner circle from there to there, and the outside circle. This is first angle orthographic projection symbol. The first angle orthographic projection, the views will be front view, top view, and left view. These are the standard views of orthographic projection, first angle orthographic projection. For third angle, the standard views, it starts with top, followed by front below, and right view on the right side. So that's how you differentiate between a first angle orthographic symbol and a third angle orthographic symbol. So let's go to the next part. We are going to do an exercise based on third angle orthographic projection sectioning. Then I'm going to insert my dimensions using a red color from here to there. It's 100 millimeters. From here to there, it's 50 millimeters. You must print. Do not write with your handwriting. We're printing. Then from here to there, it's 50 millimeters. The diameter of the circle, it's diameter 30 millimeters. The thickness from here to there, or the distance from here to there, it's five millimeters. Also from here to there, five millimeters. This is the top view. Now, in order to understand what I'm saying, let's look at this figure here. I made three same models, but in different styling. This is a casting block, or I can just call it a casting block. It doesn't have holes. Check in figure one, it doesn't have holes. On figure two, I put, I've put two holes there. On figure three, I've included how many holes? Four holes, one, two, three, and the other one behind. And I've included two ribs. Now, we are going to start with a drawing on figure one. I'm drawing it in 2D. This is a three-dimensional shape. This is the two-dimensional shape. So this is the top view. I'm looking at it from this side, from top. This is exactly what I'm going to see. Now, I'm going to project my lines to form the front view. Remember I said the standard views for third angle orthographic projection, it's top, it's front, my right on the other side. But this doesn't necessarily mean that I can work with three views always. Sometimes, sometimes I can only use two views which are top and front. Now, what will happen here, I'm going to project, that's why it's called projection, orthographic projection because we project, I project that, I project that, and I project that. Easy, right? Then I follow, I take my T-square, put it in this fashion, draw a line like that, and then the thickness, it's given as 10 millimeters, looking in, onto the screen, or into the screen. Um, I wanna draw a line like that. Then I project this center line. I can use a red marker in order to make things easy. Take that, project downwards. Then from here to there, it's 40 millimeters. With your ruler, you measure that 40 millimeters. Maybe it's there. Now I'm going to enclose the whole figure. This is what I'm going to get. Let me use a different marker, a black marker. 
there. Please, you should be using drawing instrument. So here I'm just saving time when I'm using a freehand drawing. Not necessarily that everything here has been done on freehand. You should be using your drawing instruments. Now, you can see that we got a circle. What you're going to do, you're going to project the circle downwards. It touches there and it touches there. This now, we are going to change our line type to hidden detail. Why? Let's look at figure one. When you're looking at figure one, we know that there's a hole, but when you're standing along front view, you can notice, you can notice that there's a hole unless if you cut it. There's a hole running through, but when you are on the front view side, you can't see that there's a hole. That's why I've, or that's why I'm going to use this hidden details to show that there's a hole running through. So what, what will happen here is I'll use a red marker to represent hidden details. So there you go, there you go, there you go. Those are your hidden lines. Now, let's talk about the content of the topic, which is sectioning. What's, what is happening in sectioning? I'm going to cut, I'm going to take something, a blade, a knife, whatsoever you can use for cutting from the top view, I'm gonna put it in this fashion and cut it into half. In this case, I can call it, let me put it through here, let, just my cutting plane. You can call it AA, BB, CC, it's up to you. In, in this instance, we are using section AA. So how it runs is, I'm going to take my blade or whatever, I'm going to cut it into half. In this case, it's fully sectional view, full sectional view. So what's going to happen? I'm going to take my knife or blade or whatsoever, I cut it into half. We want to see what will remain. Now listen to me very careful. What will happen is, as you are drawing, or as you are making your front view, this is what you should happen. I'm going to put it in step-by-step -step fashion. I can start here, any reference point. I know you should be working here, but I'm just showing the methodology in this portion. What will happen is, I'll start here, measure that 10 millimeters, there. Then you move from here to there, 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 again, here to there, till you are back on your origin or on your reference point. Now, this is called a boundary lines. I've drawn the boundary. This is the trajectory that I followed to form an enclosed figure. What's the next step? As I've, um, let me put it, in this fashion to, for you to make sense. The next step will be to include the center line. Where's the center line? It's in red color. Let me put the center line. Now, the next step, when you are cutting, let's see where our cutting plane went through. This is from here to here, you would agree with me that it's a solid section. So we will section this portion based on front. Section from here to there, let me indicate it, with section this part, section there. Can you see that here it's a hole? You can't section a hole. There to there is a solid part, from there to there is a solid part. So what will happen now is, we're going back here. Remember that we had hidden details or dashed lines going from here to there, from there to there, here the center line. Now listen to me very carefully. As your cutting plane pass through the top view, this is what will happen. We are going to remove this line. We remove whatever solid line, it's inside your boundary lines. Remember we have these boundary lines, so whatever, or yes, whatever solid line you have in the inside area, you remove it 
What do you see? You only see the dashed lines. Now, these dashed lines are going to be visible. Remember, we had the dashed lines like that, the dashed lines like that. So what will happen now is, when I remove that solid line, these dashed lines are going to be solid. So I'm going to turn this into a solid line, into a solid line. Then what do you see? It's the very same part, but this time I have transformed the dash line into a solid line. Now is the time to section. When you section, you should be using a 45 degree set square. You are going to do this. This is your hole. You can't section a hole, but rather you section the solid part. So this is how you section. If this is your 45 degree set square, you do like that. Move an equal spacing, just move like that. Any direction, you can um, start sectioning from left to right or from right to left, it's still the same thing. You continue again, just continue sectioning, continue sectioning, continue sectioning like that, like that, like that, like that, like that. Now this is called a fully sectional front view. Remember, this is our top view. This is our front view. So once I've removed this solid line there, I turn this dash line into a solid line and I make that sectioning. I make that sectioning with 45 degrees square. square. Please remember that. Remember, we were forming a fully sectional view of this object. I'll show it using CAT in order to make things very easy. Let's analyze the model using CAT. You would see that I've used different colors. Red for front view. When you're standing from this side, this would be your front when, and this would be your right view. This would be your top. Your top is in yellow color. Now let's go back here a bit. I said you're standing from this side. I'm looking from this side. This is my front view. When I'm standing like this, this is my right side. So this would be the right view and the top view. Let's go back to the screen. I can put it in different form. I can say front. Look at the front. We got exactly like what we have done there. The top view the very same thing. This is our top view. This is what we have seen there. The right view would be something like that. This is our right view. But in this case, it's not there. We're just using top and front. So now, I just want to show you the sectional model in 3D. This is how it will look. Activate. There. There's your fully sectional front view. I'm gonna change that into that. Activate my sectioning lines. So this is what you get, this is what you got. I can include the center line even. This is exactly the same as what we have seen there. So the last part of, of our exercise is figure two. Now I've included two holes. I want to ask you a question. What will happen if now there's a hole there and there's a hole somewhere there? Now the cutting plane has went through the first hole, the second hole, and the third hole. The answer is easy. You're gonna take that. Let me just erase that because we're using the same model. Or I can simply draw, remember, we have something like that now. Center line, a solid line, hidden details, like that. There's two holes that I've introduced. Another hole, dashed lines there, or hidden details to show that this side, whenever I'm standing from the front view side, I know that there are holes, but I can't see them. So that's why I've used 
the dash line to represent that there's a hole there. Now, what will happen is whenever I cut this figure, this top view, our cutting plane will pass through the first solid part, the hole, solid part, the hole, solid part, the hole, solid part. So we only section the solid part. You do not section, I repeat, you do not section your holes. Now let's go and section this part. The first step, remember, use your reference point. From here to there, from there to there, from there to there, from there to there, from there to there, again, till you back at the origin or at your reference point. Now, this is your boundary. This is your boundary. You form the boundary first. Now you include your center line. Then whatever is inside, which is solid, will be removed. You only left with what? The dashed lines. So here we also have the center line like that. The dashed lines are going to turn into solid lines. This is what will happen. This is what will happen. This will also turn into a solid line. That turn into a solid line. That will turn into a solid line. Now you can start sectioning. You do not section your hole, please. Do not section your holes. This is our hole, remember? This is our hole, that's our hole. That's why I do not section these holes like that. Like that, using 45 degrees set square. So this would be your full sectional fan view in this case. I'm going to analyze it using a software. Yes, this is our 3D model. So when we analyze our 3D model, as you have seen, the top view in yellow color, the front view in red color, the right view in green color. Now, check out how it will look when it's been cut. This is a full sectional front view. I'm gonna put it to normal. Can you see that there's two holes? Can you see that there's so can you see that there's three holes, one, two, and three. Now I include section lines. So this is exactly what we have got. Now, in conclusion, sectioning, it's all about cutting. The only thing you should be worried about or be careful about is the position of your sectional plane. Do not section your holes. Do not section your holes or your ribs. So maybe next time when we have a lesson, I'll present the rib parts. So if you have further questions or queries, you are welcome to forward them to my email address, which is Brian Baloy 23 at gmail.com. With regards to this particular pandemic which we are facing, I encourage all of you to study. Please do not relax. Let's stay safe. Thank you.